All right, and we should be live. Um, this is right. Dr. David Macarath, and he has a, a story for us because this is another story about people getting fired over pronouns. It's a running theme, it seems. Yes, oh, oh, definitely. Yes, it's not going to go away um, unless we unless we stand up for, for the, on this issue. So, yes, it's, it's, a, it's a vital issue for every one of us. So, the, we have this kind of a, a repeating theme here. We know that Jordan Peterson uh, had a protest over a similar issue. Um, tell us what happened in your particular case. Okay, in my in my particular case, I went for a job um, for here in the UK with the Department for Work and Pensions. Um, one of the things they need to do is to have independent medical assessments of people who are claiming benefit who are unwell, um, and that's an important job. It's necessary um, for the running of the system. It's important for people. It has aspects that some people think are negative and others which I think are positive. But one of the things about this particular job, as opposed to the job I was doing before, which was as an emergency doctor, is that um, you have to write a long report about each case that you see, each person you see. And one of the things you have to do is when you are writing this report, probably about 100 times in each report, <laughs> that's a rough estimate, you would have to use a pronoun relating to the person. Um, which would we think quite reasonably would be he or she, depending on whether they were male or female. But it became clear on this training course that um, what the Department of Work and Pensions believed uh, is that we should use any pronoun, any pronoun at all, that the client ascribes to themselves. And this is something that that's just somewhere I can't go. To me, that's dishonest. To me, that's not how pronouns are used. To me, that's uh, it, it's it's a it's a serious matter, but I've also made clear that I'm a Christian, and on my conscience, I'm just not free to use pronouns in that way. Um, mm. uh, so what so what happened was, uh, and this was during training. It's important. This was during training. There were no customers, clients, or patients involved. Um, when they said to us that they expected us to use any pronoun, depending upon what that customer wanted that client wanted um i said i can't do this in good conscience now well, it's, there are no it's almost a meme that. actually um we, we have a joke yes, uh, there, yes. there was that there was a guy yes. in in college where he said that he wanted his preferred pronoun to be your majesty yes yes I, well i think in terms of i think in terms of um what i was doing i would have been required to use that <laughs> that's because what I was told basically, well, it's essentially this, I could come to you and I could say, look, I am a, a, a male doctor um, and I have no difficulty in telling you that I am male, but I want you to call me Mrs. or I want you to call me she for the purposes of this interview. And I could insist that you do that. And at the end of the interview, I can say, that's fine. You can call me he now. Now, this was the logic that I was being given that irrespective of any other issues, anybody could choose any pronoun they wanted and insist that I address them in that way and insist that I write that in my report. And to me, not only is that dishonest, but it's disastrous. Um, well, it's also... So, uh, so, so it's, not a, it's not a small issue. It's not an issue that's... Uh, so there, there, there are two levels that you can look at this issue. The first is this. There are some people who identify as transgender who are coming in and saying, look, we identify as transgender and we expect you to use these pronouns. Now, I have a problem with that too, but what the Department for Work and Pensions had done, had taken this, extended this, broadened it out completely to the point where anybody could come up with any pronoun they wanted and um, it, uh, even invented pronouns. <laughs> and uh, this is something Jordan Peterson has, has, has particularly spoken on as well, invented pronouns and require me to use that. And they were basically, well, they're, they're making complete, complete nonsense of the English language apart from anything else. Um, well, that, uh, hang on. How, how, do you, how do you make heads or tails of a claim with a made-up gender on, on this report sheet? How do you make heads or tails of who or what or um, 
or, or well, exa what this exactly. Person yeah, I, have the, I, have, I have the same problem. I lost my job because of this. They were very kind about it. There was no sparks or anger or anything like that. But it's not what was, the way things were done. It's what was done. I lost my job. Thirty years of being a doctor wiped out in an instant um, because. It might be a possibility that somebody who wants to be called she might get called he, and that would be unthinkable. Um, now, so how do we cope with these made-up pronouns? It's nonsense. And I, I, I've stated, and, and it feels very good to state publicly, that I believe that gender and sex are the same thing, and I believe that they are unchangeable. Um, this is not... This is not politically acceptable. Uh, no, no, no. That's, the that's, that's Department really of Defense and House... Sorry, yes, yes, yes. Well, it's very unacceptable. How how dare you suggest that gender and sex are the same thing, you you uncouth barbarian? Um, it's well, yeah, well, okay. There's plenty of people. There's plenty of people who who are very happy to call me uh, an uncouth barbarian. But I say, okay, if you really think my position is untenable, bring it on. You come at me with scientific arguments. Come at me with uh, with language arguments. Show me how the English language, um, how these pronouns don't mean something, haven't meant something, aren't important. Um, come at me with uh, sociological arguments. Come at me. T t tell me. Tell me exactly where I'm wrong. Persuade me. Persuade me that somebody can change their sex, or that there's nothing to be lost here, or that I've done something is immoral or unacceptable or unthinkable. Persuade me. There's, there's a lack of there's a lack of rational argument here, and I, I had hoped that some of my medical colleagues would come back at me with with um, strong arguments as to why I was wrong and with scientific arguments, but nothing like that has happened. It's just somebody might be offended if you don't do this. Wait, and so that's a so, single so even, argument. Even in your in your in your profession, in the field of those that you work closely with, no one actually addressed your issues head on. They just said, "Oh, it's it's impolite." Was the was the? Um, I was I, no, I was basically told this is what again. Okay, I was told this is what's required. Are you prepared to do this? And I said three times. What I said was, I am a Christian, and in good conscience, I cannot do this. Um, and that's what I said. Um, I was offered help, but help is not the same as um, argument. Help is um, we will. Uh, <laughs> Well, I, I, you know, I say I, they didn't define what help was, but um, but there was no question here that we we can justify our position. We're going to persuade you. Now, think about this. Here we are in a country of sixty million people, the UK. Uh, I don't. I'm thinking probably not in the UK, but um, here we are in the UK with sixty million people, and it seems very probable that most people throughout history and most people at the present time believe that he and she are pronouns that apply to male and female, and that's it. But suddenly. We are told this is what we've got to believe, that they don't do that. Now, how can you take a population of 60 million people and just require that they commit this kind of intellectual suicide? Uh, I mean, you know, this is what we're being said. We're not being told these are the reasons. We're being told this is what you believe, chaps. I don't like, believe it. I refuse to believe it. Well, it's it's interesting because one of my follow-up questions here is you, you served as a doctor for 30 years. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming yes. that that, you, that you've served rather well. Um, have your views changed? Oh, my, changed during uh, uh, that my, time my, that would affect your performance. My, my opinion has when? changed. I think. I think. I think. What I have to say is, first of all, I, I've worked for 26 years as a doctor. Four of those years, I took out to train for the Christian ministry. That was a long time ago now. Oh, okay. Um, uh, I worked as an accident and emergency doctor, and people here will be very aware that we have a crisis in our emergency departments, not enough doctors, not enough nurses, um, far too much work for us to be able to handle in, 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 in a manner that we would like. Um, and that's the background I'm coming from. And I've thrown myself into that situation. Accident and emergency is a job that I love. I'm well suited to it, but it is punishing. And that's one of the reasons why I had to take a deep Department for Work and Pensions job, so I needed that job. Um, now, how have things changed? What's happened is, I think it's very important, there have always been people in the system who, who have uh, been transgender patients and things like that. Not very many, I might add, but there have always been people. But in the last two years, suddenly, from being something that was low-key and we all got along and nothing really you know, we, we, I don't think I don't think sudden that, that, that there was any great problem there. Suddenly, in the last two years, this has become the point of focus of the entire battle. Everything now focuses on whether one individual is offended by one pronoun, and if that happens, the entire NHS 
must collapse and the world must come to an end because nobody can tolerate that. Suddenly, this is everything. This is the whole issue. This is, and we're getting this through the media, through the politically correct channels, through the government, obviously, because of what happened to me. Suddenly, this is the really, really important thing. And as I said, it has the effect of saying is, this is what you believe, chaps. We all believe this now. We didn't believe this before, but that was ancient history. Um, this is what we believe. And, 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 and you can't do that to a population. Yes. So, 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 sorry, to answer your question, two years ago, not really a problem. Now, a very big problem indeed. My goodness. Well, here, here's the, the staggering thing is, you know, that this is one thing to entertain, like in a college setting, in a, in a social studies setting, and like, you know, someone who wants to pontificate in, I don't know, it's a, a, a Labour Party smoke room somewhere, if, if they would indulge. Mm -hmm. But this is medicine. This is medicine. Yes, this, is. this is a science. Yes, is. This is where we we interact with the human body in a very distinct and methodical way. There are things that must be done to, you know, help the patient to make them healthy to not to make sure they don't die. Why yes. why is this gobbledygook infesting medicine? I think this is, you only have to read George Orwell's 1984. And that was the fir first thing I did after I got sacked was actually get a copy of 1984 and read it for the first time in 40 years um, because I wanted to get some insight into what was going on. And the fact is when you have a, 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 when you have a society that is being driven by political correctness, you have a society that is being driven by fear. And I've met a lot of frightened people since this happened to me. Um, people are afraid. They're afraid to speak. Once you are in a f climate of fear to speak, what you find is that people get coerced. And what I think is this, I think there is an impossible stress coming on the medical profession now because some doctors are giving into this, they're believing what is to me obviously a lie, um, and others are standing against it because they have to, because they cannot practice their specialty in a dishonest manner. It's introducing dishonesty to the medical profession, and I don't believe that, for example, our National Health Service can survive that dishonesty. But... If I was to lay down the gauntlet, I would say I would like to challenge my profession to prove to prove that somebody can change sex. I'd like them to prove that. I'd like to see the evidence. I want them to come to me and say, David, you are wrong. You are right to be sacked because this is where the truth lies. I want that evidence. Nobody's coming forward. Well, they they really won't. They they know that the science is not on their side. We've had that discussion many, many, many times. Um, then how can you practice medicine? How can you practice medicine when you dis when you discard basic science? I mean, you don't. The I mean, short you know, answer is you, you, you really you can't. can't. No, people say, I mean, you've been to medical school, David, so you know about. Come on, you only need to go to primary school to know the difference between boys and girls. You don't need to be an expert. We're well, all experts. Then, well, then, let, 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 let me ask you something. It, when uh, what is a doctor's relationship professionally? Um, with the gender of his patient. That, now that that is that is a very interesting question. It's actually it's 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 it's, 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 it's difficult to answer because because I th this is this is why I can't afford to have my conscience forced and other people. If okay, I, I can remember seeing I've seen let's see let's say in the last twenty years I've seen one hundred twenty thousand patients and only one of those, as far as I'm aware, has been a transgender patient. So it's not been a big problem for me, but what is a problem is, 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 is the way we're all being forced to say what we'll do and say what we'll say under certain circumstances. But I would argue this, that a doctor must have absolute integrity and honesty in the dealing with his or her patients. And if I am just going to go along with any gender pronoun that anybody gives to me, be they patient or relative or otherwise, that is dishonest. And that is a fundamental attack on the relationship between a doctor and their patient, in my opinion. And I believe it's dishonest to use the wrong pronoun. Well, and not only is it dishonest to use the wrong pronoun, I mean, from my basic medical understanding of the human body, um, <laughs> there are many factors that a doctor has to grapple with when administering yes. to a patient, and the gender yes. or sex of that patient is relevant. Yes, that 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 that, that is abs that's absolutely true. Um, and um, I think one of the examples that came up was that 
um, certain persons um, would need an examination of their prostate gland, for example, who actually don't have them. And yet I could get into trouble for refusing to examine a non-existent gland. Um, this is the kind of logical nonsense that we're coming up with. Um, but for some people, it could even be life-threatening. There you are. Somebody's come into the emergency room and they are obviously male and something by their anatomy. And somebody says, you can't call them that. So what effect does that have on the way you treat that patient who may be dying in front of you? What effect does it have on the information that you give just so they can go to a female ward um, uh, and be treated as a female? Um, and yet, yes, I think that could cost somebody their lives. But it's not just about that. It's, it, it's what it does to the whole of society. I, I, it's what it does to us all. It's, 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 it, is, it is so mind-jarringly, ridiculously, nonsensically dangerous to misuse pronouns. These little words, he and she, they're like atomic bombs in society. And they've been weaponized and sent against us by the politically correct brigade. Sorry, I'm being carried away, but I, re I feel really strongly about this. You've probably picked that up. <laughs> well, well, no, I, I would feel strongly about it too if it was my direct line of work and, it, and the language barrier actually impeded my effectiveness in something that is as dire and straightforward as yeah. medicine. As you know, the yes, I, I, I agree. But even see, one of the things see, so several people have said um, that you know I should uh, I shouldn't be allowed to practice because I've said my conscience doesn't permit me to misuse pronouns. Now you take away everybody with conscience from the NHS, for example, um, and what have you got left? A conscienceless system. Um, is that what they want? A, a system where nobody has any conscience? And I agree that not everybody will take my line, and some people's conscience might lead them to do the opposite to what I'm doing. But we cannot afford to have a health service without conscience. And when you start sacking people on issues of conscience, and when you start saying we shouldn't have people of conscience in the health service, you're in a very, very dangerous situation. Well, um, and well, my, my point is, how would your mm -hmm. reluctance to acknowledge someone's made up or shall we say, misassigned gender, um, how would that in any way affect your performance as a doctor to giving them well, that's proper a good question service? Because, because it, was, it was reported in the press that I'd refused to help people who are transgender. I have never refused to help any patient. I have committed myself uh, as a doctor and as a Christian to do the best I can for all my patients. That doesn't make me a perfect doctor, but um, that, that includes all of them. And I'm not saying to that particular patient, I refuse to treat you. But what I'm asking is that may I please maintain my integrity and not be forced to do something which isn't going to affect your care, but which I cannot do in good conscience. And that is misuse pronouns. Clearly, the answer coming from above is that um, from from the government is that um, I can't have that freedom. This is what this is what Jordan Peterson thinks called forced speech issues. We are going to force these doctors to say this. Um, and you're going to, there are lots and lots of doctors, I'm sure, who would agree with my position. Lots of nurses who would agree with my position, but are afraid to say so. They're being forced to behave in a certain way. Well, it's it seems like they're culturing. Uh, they are nurturing a, a culture of um, dishonesty, um, at least with this th this kind of interview vetting process that, that you're telling me about, because I know several nurses who just like, you know, lie through the process. They get on the floor and yes. they'd be like, you're a dude. Let, let's check it out. Let's let's take care of business. Mm -hmm. um, yes. I yes, that, that's that's how di dictatorships arrive uh, arise. Um, what people have said to me, see, I've seen this as well, people, people who agree with my position but aren't prepared to put their job at risk, I'm not asking them to, that's a matter of their own conscience. But again, we haven't realised the power of these pronouns. We haven't realised that these are atomic weapons that have been launched against us, these pronouns, he and she, that they have the power to destroy our civilization. they have the power to destroy our society. And all it takes is for people of conscience to say, yes, but it's just once or I'll do it in this situation. We have no idea of the weapon or the power or the force that's been unleashed against us by certain parties to destroy our worldview, to destroy our society. These pronouns are very powerful and they are absolutely essential. It is essential that we maintain their correct use for the survival of our civilization. That's how strongly I feel about it. So people that we've talked about people here who who believe the same as me, but feel that 
doesn't matter. It does matter. What I want is this. I want it to be established in the United Kingdom at this time, in this country that still claims to have freedom of speech. I want it to be established that I have the freedom to stand up and shout from the rooftops that I believe that sex and gender are the same thing and that they cannot be saved. Say, say, say. They cannot be changed, sorry. They cannot be changed. Sex and gender are the same thing and they cannot be changed. I want the freedom to say that. I want all of my colleagues to have the freedom to say that without any fear of um, losing their jobs or even being struck off, which uh, some of them seem to have been threatened with. Um, I want my colleagues to be able to stand up and say publicly, we agree with David Macris without any fear of uh, repercussions. But unfortunately, that's not the situation we're living in. We are living in a climate of fear. We're living in a situation where people compromise. and um, We're living in a situation where people do not realize the power of what is going on. And the result will be dictatorship. Well, my, my immediate question is, if these pronouns are such uh, nuclear bombs, well, doesn't it sort yes. of justify the claim that, you know, you should use someone's preferred pronoun? I'm just going to challenge that that assertion okay. real quickly because thank I feel you, yes. obligated thank, thank to do you for, so. Thank you for, for ch thank you for challenging that. This is this is how I see it. Um, if you there's obviously been a lot about Dunkirk uh, in the movies recently. Now, if you think about Dunkirk, and it was said that after Dunkirk, um, the Germans, if they'd invaded, could almost have walked down Whitehall without a shot being fired. We were in peril then uh, as a country here, and um, you know, by God's grace, we were saved from that. But but. Now, I don't see the battle that we have now for our minds, for our hearts, for our civilization, for what we believe. I don't see the battle as being any less serious than it was after Dunkirk, because um, these pronouns are so powerful. He and she are so powerful. And we fail to realize what we fail to realize that every single one of us is under attack here. Every single one of us is in a situation where we can lose our freedom and lose our liberty. So the and the, used correctly used to define biological maleness and femaleness um these pronouns um anchor our society to its sanity <laughs> but used incorrectly used to mean anything uh, for anybody then uh, as a society we cast adrift um let me illustrate that facebook had uh, an ever increasing number of different genders people can have and, and the truth of that is you can have seven billion genders if you want and you can have a pronoun for every one of those if you want but essentially the, the way we're heading with this if we if we use our pronouns wrongly we're heading to a genderless society where we can no longer tell the difference between individuals and something was very powerful said to me by a young woman who was a researcher at one of the media outlets who basically said when she realized when she saw this that this 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 Facebook thing was having the effect of wiping out gender altogether. She said this strikes at the very heart of who we are as human beings and who we are as people. And that's exactly what it's like. If we have a billion genders, we have no gender at all. We have no way of deciding the difference between men and women, between male and female. That's what happens if we misuse these pronouns or if we invent new pronouns. It's just as bad. Um, we have to fight for these words. We have to fight for the historical, rational, normal, um, logical use of these pronouns. He and she, our survival depends on it. That's what I believe. Well, that's, huh. So, no, I, I, I like that. I like the sound of that. Um, I'm sure there are yeah, several yeah. people who but, would. But, 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 sure but there are people out there saying it's, it's, it's mad to believe that. There are people out there saying you're crazy. <laughs> Well, I, I, I don't, I don't understand. I don't These are people who don't yeah. believe in um, normal. They, they don't believe in things as uh, – they, they believe in things that are very um, relative. And I, I understand that point well, of view. You're talking about the British government now, I think. <laughs> well, I'm – I like humanity and I like interactions between – the men, men and women. I, I like the. I, I like it when people can have, like I'm. I myself am a conservative. I'm. I'm quite religious mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But I get very anxious when I don't feel that those around me are capable of enjoying the simple lusts of life, and that mm -hmm. to me is mm -hmm. also what what is being endangered is. The, the very 
basic things that we're able to enjoy as men, as women, and as human beings also seems to be kind of precariously, you know, being lost. We have men who are no longer encouraged to be men or masculine and strong. And ever increasingly, women are told, um, mm -hmm. don't stay home. You're, you're not made for that. Or there, there's so much yes. more fulfillment outside of the home. We, we, and we've, created, we've created, sorry, yes, we've created gender confusion. And gender confusion wars against manliness. Now, I'm going to let the ladies speak for themselves. But I'm a man, and I think manliness is important. And this is a war against manliness. When you have gender confusion and when you have gender abolished, which I believe is the end of this, um, then you can no longer have manliness. And if you're always attacking manliness by saying that if you don't go along with the gender confusion, um, that you are hurting somebody else, then you can no longer contend or fight for what you believe. We need manliness. We need manly men. And of course, I would say the best example of that is the Lord Jesus Christ um, of, 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 of manliness. Um, but, um, but here we are under attack. You cannot have gender confusion. You cannot have a confused use of pronouns and have manly men. Well, and, 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 that's something, and, and that's something that's been lost, is when you don't yes. have good examples of, of manliness, women start, yes. women start losing the ideal of what a man is. Um, they they yes. don't understand what a good man looks like. They don't know what true well, strength is, looks like. Exactly, exactly. This is where it's going. If we can't use pronouns properly, and this is, you know, and if we get the medical profession on board, then that strengthens their position. Doesn't it? If we can't, then we can no longer decide what a man is, what a, a woman is. And ev eventually, we can't, we can't decide the differences between the sexes, so they cease to exist. Now, when that happens, we pretty much cease to be people altogether. We cease to be persons. Um, and then we become mere commodities. You can be used by the Marxist, the military industrial complex, whoever you like. Um, somebody oh, don't, get crazy, now. As, as don't get crazy now. Don't get crazy now. Did I mention the military industrial complex? No. Um, the the, the thing, communists thing, aren't coming. Thing, uh, well, somebody is driving this agenda. It's, it's much bigger than the, the, the LGBT movement and, or, or the transgender movement. What I want to say is this. If you say... I strongly disagree with misusing pronouns. If you say, I've got a conscience and I can't do that, you may lose your job if you do that. But if you say that, somebody will come back at you and say, but look at these people who are being offended by what you're saying. And very often we get put into this siding where people, are, somebody somewhere is theoretically offended. Um, and so we're not allowed to speak. And that is also a curb on freedom of speech. We are all under attack here. Every one of us is under attack. We are, it's, it, this, is, this, is, this isn't us attacking other people. This is us being attacked, and, mm -hmm. and we must come up with a proper defense against well, this. I, I would like to, to address a particular point because I was, I was looking into your situation, and they mentioned yes. the 2010 Equality Act. What yes, is yes. this, and what is it played it, into this decision? Your, your, well, your scenario. Uh, okay. I, think, I, think I, have to, I think I have to say that I'm not... Um, a legal person. Um, I seem to be on the receiving end of the law, but I'm not a legal person. But uh, basically, if you look at what's happened to me, um, whatever that act says, the DWP, in my opinion, and I treat them as a representative of the British government, um, they've gone way beyond that. Because they basically said nobody's allowed to say this or to think it. Um, but what this seems to say, they talk about protected characteristics and they don't seem to know exactly how that works out. Nobody does. But these protected characteristics were so concerned that my conscience might at some point in the future affect one of these protected characteristics in some way that might cause offence that a 30 year career is brought to an end. Well, 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 that's an interesting, an interesting phrase in and of itself. Protected characteristic. If having yes, a yes. penis is a protected characteristic, that would completely throw this case wide open. Um, but I don't <laughs> think, I don't think that's where it's, they're it's going. <laughs> I don't think that's where no, they're no, going. No, 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 no. Having a conscience should be a protected characteristic. No, I think also religion is a protected characteristic. But the problem there is that obviously my religion is is is, is ignored. <laughs> and um, 
What's really important here is there was no actual case. What they said was at some point in the future, you might possibly break a law that we don't fully understand, but it's possible you might break the law in the future in such a way that we think you're unfit to carry on with this job now. If I had broken the law, then they could show that and they could um, they could um, deal with me accordingly. But the mere thought that I might at some point transgress some fluid concept of the law was enough for me to lose my job. You are okay, preemptively well, chosen against uh, wrong think. Well, my, my, yes, exactly. My point here is that this means I'm not free to believe what I believe. And that I take strong issue with. That, oh my goodness. Well, it's, I didn't know it was the government's job to enforce belief. That to me, that is a very foreign and uh, scary concept. I, I live in I live in America. I live in Texas. That this uh, the idea that the government could issue an edict based on what I believe is a, a very staggering um, notion. I think, I think I think I think the problem here is also that if you've got something like protected characteristics and nobody knows what this means or how it works out, you've got a situation in law where. The, an indefinite law like this, a law you can't pin down that says this is right and that's wrong, is a law that is absolutely right for being abused. Um, and uh, again, you know, protected characteristics, what does that mean? Again, this affects freedom of speech too, because, because I'm never sure if I say that I think transgenderism is, 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 is not possible. Um, I'm never quite sure that I'm actually breaking that law, whether that's a hate crime or not, to say so. But that's what I believe. I get back to the saying that I want to be free to say what I believe without fear of molestation. I want to say I don't believe that. But this could be a hate crime based on those characteristic protect, uh, char those protected characteristics. Uh, and as we know, all animals are equal, but some are more equal than others. Well, clearly. And, 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 and that's another thing we see you know, like that Jordan Peterson brought up and yeah. that we're seeing with this... Yeah. Uh, this Tommy Robinson case, which thankfully got yes, uh, yes. overturned and delayed, um, is yes, yes. there is clearly not um, equal enforcement of these laws and these standards, whatever they mean. It's clearly not equally enforced to all persons or all um, uh, characteristics. Protected characteristics yes. is what you is what the phrase yes. is. Yes, so can we please give up the idea that we live in a free society and can we actually then say what the society is that we live in? Oh, absolutely. Um, if you would like to join the Libras at Speaker's Corner at some future <laughs> event, please, please come on down. Um, well, if Jonathan, I'm down there, I'll, I'll look out for you. <laughs> yeah. our, our boy Johnny will gladly have you with us. Um, yes, yes. But no, and th there, there is this problem in, in England with this, with not holding everyone to the same standard, not holding everyone to, uh, you know, the same measurement of yes. of equality, and and that's a problem. There, that that yeah. is a problem with blind justice. Yes. If you have rules yes. for one yes. and rules for the other, that's that's another yes. issue that this touches I, on I, very nicely. I don't know, yeah, I don't know much about the Tommy Robinson case, but I'm very concerned about what I read about the way he was treated in prison. Uh, very concerned indeed. Um, and yes, 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 you are right. Now the question is, so what kind of threat are we under? How do you respond to such a threat? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm totally committed to peaceful means. <laughs> but I, I believe that if people don't stand up and speak out, the future is certain. Well, here's, here's the current strategy. You're going to speak boldly, speak truthfully, and throw in a good joke in the middle of it. People love the truth wrapped in a good joke. And when, yes. and when your enemy gets angry, when your enemy gets yes. um, censorous and agitated, that's how the people know that the yes. government is wrong and you are right. Um, yes. yes. People, well, people I'd like to come back and like, go on. <laughs> Continue. Sorry, sorry. No, I just, I'd like to come back and repeat my gauntlet. I would like my profession to prove to me that it's possible to change sex. 
Oh my goodness. It, it it's it's fascinating the, the, this concept of of changing sex. It's and um it it's even in America they they they, te they teach this this gobbledygook in schools and the only reason I know that is cuz my my daughter came in and said we're going to change the dog for, to a girl. I'm like, no, we're, no, you're going to leave the dog alone. The dog is not going to be mm -hmm. a girl. Mm -hmm. um, you, and, you know, they, they, they want to pretend. They want to play. They, 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 they oh, do. Let's pretend. Every, everybody knows that's pretense. This is, this, is, this is pretense being sold as reality. Please, oh. conservative government, please, British government, please persuade me. Please give me the evidence. Please tell me why you sacked me. Please show me. I'm pleading with you. I need the evidence. I'm hungry for it. Show me how a person can change sex. Well, we have comments in the chat, not conservative. They're Blairites. Okay. We need to reset to 1997 in the UK before Blairism. Well done, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. well, well done. Um, yes. But, but yes. And, you knew and, that's, power. And, and, and that's a good point. Children know that they're playing. Our, yes. The, the UK government is in trying to shove something down your throat that even children know is a joke. Yes, children do know it's a joke, but by the time they've got through primary school these days, what's going on in our schools is not a joke. What's going on in our schools, what's happening to our children is a disaster, in my opinion. It is, it's been said by many people that it's child abuse. Uh, it's part of a political agenda. It's politicizing children and using them for their own purposes. Um, and this is very, very concerning. Uh, um, and another point, um, you mentioned um, whether um, having a male, male genitalia was a protected um, characteristic, which of course it isn't. It's less protected than you think because the government is about to move to um, opt out organ donation. Uh, and that means none of us are protected um, um, because they can take any part of our body when we die and transplant that into somebody else. And that's where I think this is going. One of the ways in which this is going, I find that abhorrent. Uh, yeah, you're. Uh, that's. I, I I can see how one might suggest that that is progressive, but it's certainly not Christian. Um, well, uh, what, what they're going to say to me in future is, I'm going to say, look, if you haven't got male genitalia, you're not a man. And they're going to say, that's not a problem, because we can give you male genitalia now. The operation can already be done. You just well, need a ready supply of, 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 of body parts, I suppose, and they're going to get one. Oh, good heavens. That's no, no. You have to look ahead. You have to see where this is going. Well, j just the idea that, that the NHS would Frankenstein people up just because they had the spare parts around is... Um, well, two days ago, the uh, there were two items on the three items on the BBC website side by side, uh, BBC Health website. The first one said, the Qualities um, Commission orders the NHS to give fertility treatment to transgender people. The second one said, um, opt out, uh, sorry, op uh, um, compulsory basically um, uh, organ donation to be in by 2020. And the third one said, a third more people dying of sepsis. The third one showing that we need more money to fight sepsis because people are dying. The first one that we've been ordered to spend more money on fertility treatment. Um, For trans. And with trans people. Um, and the middle one showing that our bodies are now considered to be the property of the UK government for disposal as they choose, unless we opt out. You know, I, I, I try and think of all the ways that I'm going to get struck off. I'm a little paranoid, most doctors, I think, many doctors are, I think. Um, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, um, I try and think of all the ways I'm going to get struck off for saying these things, stop from practicing medicine. And one of those, I think, might be for saying that, that I would opt out of giving my organs for donation just because I want control over what happens to my genitals after I die. And many, many men might feel the same way and opt out for the same reason. And I could be accused of not allowing people, or putting people off, allowing their organs to be used for transplant. But that is the hair-raising, foolish, unbelievably scary ridiculous world in which we're living yeah it's it, it sounds dystopian i'm 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 not gonna lie um, <laughs> then the, the, this is where or orwell is like literally like five years behind us at this point 
Um, yes, I, I, I see people think, okay, oh, well, that, that's got to be Stalinism because that's what he was writing. It doesn't have to be Stalinism. There's all kinds of dist different dictatorships. And you can have a gender-fluid dictatorship. You can control people and you can be that boot stamping in a human face forever well, that Orwell well, spoke hang about. hang on. You and, can do that by controlling gender. No, no, in, in Maoist China, in, in Maoist China, they, mm -hmm. um, they dressed all of the people in the party with um, the same gray uniforms, mm -hmm. same cut yes, for the men and the women. And that was because, the to, yeah, the, the, the Mao suits to, to, um, yes. to get rid of the gender identity and to encourage conformity and to encourage um, unity with the party and, and, and Maoist China. And I'm, you know, that, that, that yes, really they, they, makes they the case, that. it makes the case well, say, that, yes. that perhaps, you know, acknowledging one's gender and, you know, magnifying your, your gender or your, and your sex is a part of your individuality. You know, your individuality. It, 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 it strikes at who we are as people. I, I'm not just David Macron. I am a man. I'm glad I'm a man. I want to be a man. That's what I am. <laughs> and, well, and, um, the, 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 this shows us how that ideology and about the, what communism wanted to do was to reduce everybody to the same level, to make sex merely a, a physical experience um, and to, to make everybody, th this was part of the message of 1984, which Orwell wrote, was, a, was a, that sex was to be a purely physical thing, that everybody's intense focus um, and, and, and attitudes should be towards the party, not towards other people. Um, there were commodities, uh, and even more so, if I may say, with the military-industrial complex, in my opinion. But um, but the th thing here is that is that you, you you take away gender and you turn people into the kind of commodities. It's, this is why this is why there is enormous debt to, to the Orwell finishing his book with the words "He loved Big Brother." That's what it's all about. We've all got to love Big Brother, whichever that dictatorship, whoever that dictator is, whichever the party is whether it's communist, fascist, or uh, gender fluid, um, or any one of a number of other possible dictatorships that could arise, um, that's the whole idea. Relationships must be destroyed, distinctives must be destroyed. The human being as a person, as an individual with desires, um, and functioning as an individual, must be obliterated. Well, we, we know the end game there. So the obvious question now that I'm going to ask to you is, how do we, we know the problem with the NHS and things have gotten this bad, but as someone famous once said, uh, politics is downstream from culture. How do we turn the yes. culture to start honoring and um, accentuating masculinity and femininity as opposed to okay. non-gender? I have, I have, okay. I have two, two, two answers. To that. First of all, everybody in the NHS, everybody employed by the NHS must be free to say, that they agree with me, if they agree with me, they must also be free to say they don't agree with me if they don't agree with me, obviously, obviously that's important. But at the moment there is a climate of fear. People have been threatened and they're not able to say they agree with me without fear of, of being treated in the way that I've been treated. We must have freedom to say this and having that freedom, people must use that freedom. If thousands or millions of people don't stand up and say this, then our culture will be impossible to rectify. But the second, and this is even more important, we must return to the Christian. I believe we must return to the preacher. That's where I stand. On this. I'm sorry. Could, could you repeat that one more time? My my audio cut out for just a second. Okay. My belief is that we must return to the gospel of Jesus Christ. We must return to our historical Christian roots. Um, I, I know that wasn't a feature of, of the Enlightenment, but... Um, this is the only way we can anchor ourselves in maleness and femaleness. It wasn't without um, significance that I quoted the Bible at the time when I was being questioned as to whether I should be sacked or not, that God says in the beginning, he made them male and female. God has done this. Somebody outside of ourselves, somebody who has absolute authority has nailed this and fixed it permanently. And if we return to that, we can return to maleness and femaleness um, as they really are. And I don't see any other way of doing that. I don't see any other philosophy that can get us back there. Um, nothing else is strong enough to stand in this situation. Um, I'll, I'll be honest. I, I don't disagree with you necessarily, but no. from from my point of view, we need to sex it up a bit. 
we need to okay. we, we need to we need to find a way where we can make righteousness attractive and sexy and desirable mm -hmm. um and mm -hmm. my, my my twitter handle is a uh, carnal conservative mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and that's not a shout that's out that, that, that's that's my yes. philosophy that that's that's what i believe yes. in i believe in being a carnal conservative because mm -hmm. you're not if you're not having fun while you're doing it don't do it but mm -hmm. there is something about conservatism about christianity about uh the the christian doctrine and the theology that really lets men be men and women be women and to do so happily and and so i, I yes, agree oh, with I, 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 I agree with the I, 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 I absolutely agree to, 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 when god made us male and female um it, 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 that is a joyful thing <laughs> And, 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 and when he gave us sexual relations, um, that is a joyful thing. Um, so, so there's no question there. But whenever we break God's law um, and whenever we go astray, which we all do, every single one of us does, we hurt ourselves. Um, now, if you're going to say that um, gender fluidity, for example, is wrong, the idea that I could be one gender today and another gender tomorrow and I could be any one of seven billion different genders is wrong. You're going to have to have a firm doctrine. You're going to have to have a firm um, philosophical or theological base for that, um, something that is powerful enough, is strong enough to stand up to that. And I would argue only the doctrine of revealed truth um, is strong enough to do that. Now, you may disagree with that, and we, you know that's fine. It's good to have a discussion about this. But that's what I believe. I believe we have to have revelation. We have to have something outside ourselves telling us what's right. Well, I, as I said, I don't necessarily disagree with you. I just say, yeah, yeah. There, there needs to be something culturally that makes that come to a head. And yes, yes. Um, well, my, my answer is that my answer is that would be the out and out preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Again, you may disagree with that, but that would be my answer. Well, we're, we're going to agree to disagree on that point. That's right. That's um, th this has been an enjoyable conversation. Thank you for coming on. And I hope to hear you at, at another time. Uh, feel free to come back wh okay. whenever you feel so inclined. And, uh, yes, uh, thank you. It's very kind of you to listen to me, Frank. Thank you very much for interviewing me, and, uh, and I wish you well. And if I'm ever down at Speaker's Corner, I certainly will look out, out for your, your, your picture. All right. We'll catch you later. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.